Yo guys, welcome to our video today. The channel is Nazwin. How to destroy your liver is our topic today. And we're going to talk about the 10 things which can destroy your liver. So, I want to teach you on how to destroy your liver. <laughs> so, the 10 things are the ones which we're going to share, guys. Kindly, you have not subscribed. We always make fun with this channel. Uh, on serious issues uh, such as medical, so that, that that is how we make. It. It be very easy. Kindly, if you have not liked the video, like it, so that uh, YouTube can recommend us to the larger population. And that way, that's the way you can always get us supported by YouTube, guys. How to destroy your liver is our topic today and it is important to always prioritize your health but understanding harmful behaviors that can hi highlight uh, the importance of avoiding them. So that is why I've chosen the, the topic how to destroy your liver so that you prioritize your health and un understand the harmful behaviors that can highlight the importance of avoiding them. Here are the behaviors that can damage your liver and should be avoided to maintain your liver health. Very important. So the behaviors that can damage your liver, I'm going to state the 10 of them. Number one is uh, what most of the people don't like. is about alcohol consumption, excessive alcohol consumption. The effect of this, it leads to a fatty liver Kindly, if you have not watched the, the, the our previous video on the fatty liver, kindly watch it. I gave a lot of details on the role and the functions of the liver and how a fatty liver comes about. So, excessive alcohol consumption, uh, the effect of it is that it leads to a fatty liver uh, and also what you call alcoholic hepatitis and also cirrhosis. So the thing is, if you want to avoid this, limit alcohol and follow up recommended guidelines on alcohol consumption. In my previous video, I've talked about what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to control your alcohol intake because that way you get to help yourself and also help your body on how best you can always, uh, uh, so that uh, you don't get into the level where you get a lot of uh, issues with your hepatitis, fatty liver, and also cirrhosis. Number two is the chronic use of certain medications. So medications are not spared either. So chronic use of certain medications, the effect of the excessive use of some medications is the overuse of medication, like what you call NSAIDs, like uh, acetaminophen, can cause liver damage. So it is very key. Uh, especially that uh, you the overuse of some medications such as uh, acetaminophen and also brufen can cause liver damage. So to avoid this, use all those medications as directed by your healthcare provider and consult your healthcare provider before taking new ones. That's how best you can go about this one. Number three is about high fat diet. The effect of this uh, it can contribute to non-alcoholic fatty liver, what you call NFLD, so non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So high fatty diet is very dangerous, can contribute to non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease. So to avoid this, uh, follow balanced diet rich in uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and also lean proteins. That's very key. If you want to avoid high fat, uh, you want to, con uh, to control this uh, an alcoholic fatty disease. So high fatty diet is the number three cause uh, bad habit which can damage your liver. Number four is about drug abuse. When we talk about drug abuse, is when we talk about illicit drugs uh, which can be damaging to the liver and uh, which can bring uh, some infections on the, to the liver. So to avoid this, avoid illegal drugs use and seek help for substance abuse if you have issues with that. With that. 
uh, kindly drug abuse can lead to the problems of the liver. Number five, bad habit which can destroy your liver is about exposure to toxins, especially for those who work in an industrial settings or who work who reside uh, near uh, the industrial industrial areas, especially to, we are the industries which deal with a lot of chemicals and also discharge their chemicals to the environment. So you are likely to get those toxins, toxins which can damage your liver. To avoid use, uh, to avoid this, you always, if you work in that such kind of environment or you stay near that environment, use protective gear, gear when handling the chemicals because most of those chemicals are very high in lead and the lead cannot be really excreted or removed from the body easily. So it gets to damage our liver. So key, avoid those, those uh, exposures by using the protective gears when handling chemicals and reduce the uh, exposure to pollutants. Number six, thing which can, uh, which can destroy your liver is about infections, especially viral infections such as the hepatitis B and C can cause chronic liver disease. And when it relates to this, uh, always practice, uh, we talk about, uh, especially with the, the, the effect of the infections, especially the viral infections, like B, uh, but it's B and C, they are normally sexually transmitted. So always practice safe sex. Uh, it's very key. Avoid sharing needles and get vaccinated for hepatitis. So especially those people who work in the hospital setting, we are really advised to take hepatitis B uh, vaccines, which can work very well and uh, protect you from getting those infections. And also practice safe sex so that you don't get the, the, those infections if you have very many uh, sexual partners. Obesity and a poor diet is also another thing because it can lead to what we call the non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease, NFLD. So obesity can lead to NFLD and the liver inflammation. So to avoid this, maintain healthy weight through diet and also exercise. So diet and exercise is very key at that particular point. Number eight is lack of exercise. The effect of this uh, increases the risk of NFLD, NFLD so non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease and other liver related uh, problems or diseases. To avoid this, engage in regular physical activity, guys. Number nine is about high sugar intake. It can also lead to, uh, problem, to have problems with your liver. So excessive sugar can contribute to the liver fat accumulation. So to avoid this, uh, always reduce consumption of sugar foods and also beverages. So very key, avoid or reduce the consumption of sugar foods and also beverages. Number 10 is about uh, dehydration. When we talk about dehydration, is poor intake of water. So with, this, with dehydration, this can impair the function and the detoxification of the processes of the liver because what the major function of the liver is to detoxify, detoxify our body uh, and detoxification it means to remove the poisons from our body so when you are dehydrated or you have dehydration or you don't have enough water in the body you get uh, elimination of those toxins from the body it becomes difficult for the liver so it can lead to liver damage. So drink adequate water daily. And when we talk about uh, water, we talk about safe drinking water, either boiled or a protected water for you, which are free from bacteria and other microorganisms which can cause diseases at the end of the day. Number 11 is also about smoking. When we talk about smoking, toxins in the cigarettes and also can harm the liver. So the main thing there is about quitting smoking and avoid second hand smoke. So if you, uh, when we talk about second hand smoke, we mean if you stay with your partner, if you are a husband, your wife is smoke is a smoker, you are a second and uh, you are always with her, you are a second hand smoker. So you a second hand smoker and it is very dangerous, especially on the second hand uh, smokers. If you are a wife and your husband is smoking always uh, in the in the in the house you get second hand smoke 
So actually, it is a, it can be very, it can affect your liver at the end of the day. So you should avoid this here. So excessive use of supplements and herbs can also be a problem, especially for those who believe in traditional medicine. So, so be especially the herbs on the herbs. And the issue which we always have with the herbs is that they, we don't know what they cause on the liver. They can cause liver damage because the dosages are not controlled and we don't know the really content of those herbs. So it's very key that you avoid uh, excessive use of those supplements and herbs. So you should use your uh, herbs or supplements or herbs with the advice of your health, health provider so that you don't damage your liver. Also, number 13 is about ignoring uh, liver health symptoms. Ignoring the liver health symptoms. And when we talk about this, we talk about delayed diagnosis and treatment of liver conditions. Somebody develops a problem with the liver and takes a lot of time to go to the hospital to get the appropriate help. So it leads to a lot of issues at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, because now we go to the complicated part of it, and this can really bring a lot of challenges. So seek medical attention if you have symptoms like uh, the, the symptoms like jaundice, fatigue and abdominal pain, it's always good that you get to see your healthcare provider to help you make the proper diagnosis. Number 14 is about stress. And the guys, if you see most of the videos we've, we've, uh, we've touched and also done in the past, we, we've seen that stress is always mentioned everywhere. So chronic stress can negatively impact liver function. So we always advocate for my, uh, 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 practicing stress reduction techniques like mindfulness. We talk about yoga, we talk about meditation. That those are very key to reduce the stress levels. So maintaining your liver health and avoiding behaviors that contribute to the liver damage is very key. They are also limiting alcohol, eating balanced diet, exercising regularly and avoiding toxins are key preventive measures uh, for you. Seek medical advice for any concerns about the liver, health and adopt a lifestyle that supports overall well-being. So guys, those are the 14 uh, aspects which you need to see, which can damage your liver uh, uh, completely. And if you, you lose your liver, you only have that one organ you get into a lot of problems. So how are you, are you, are you supposed to manage those, uh, those, uh, those uh, points we've stated above? So managing liver health involves adopting a combination of uh, lifestyle changes, dietary mo modifications, regular monitoring, and also medications where necessary. So the key strategies for managing liver health effectively is number one, healthy diet. We talk about balanced nutrition. We say consume diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grain, lean proteins, and also healthy fats. Avoid processed foods, uh, sugary drinks, especially for those of us who like sodas and also sweets, candies. They are not very conducive. I think the director is getting me and high fatty meals. So hydration also is very key at that particular point where we get to talk about my director is looking at me because he knows how we like... Uh, <laughs> those sodas and also the candies but they damage <clears throat> in every video we have mentioned we talked about this and it's really factual from the research so drink a lot of water to support also liver detoxification processes regular exercise is another aspect on how you are supposed to manage your liver physical activity we say about 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week such as brisk walking we talk about cycling, we talk about swimming, it's a good exercise. Exercise helps uh, maintain healthy weight and reduce the risk of fatty liver disease. Number three is about limit alcohol intake, like I've mentioned, and also avoid uh, 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 illegal drugs intake because they bring a lot of issues at the end of the day. Medication management, I've talked about astaminophen and brufen and also other over-the-counter medications, always know what you are taking. Also consult, always consult with the healthcare provider before you start new medications. Vaccinations, I mentioned about them. Uh, hepatitis vaccines are available, especially for A and B. So hepatitis vaccines can prevent the viral infections that can damage the liver. 
regular medical checkups is also another aspect where we regular you regularly check your liver function through blood tests especially if you are at risk of factors of liver disease so screening because of early detection and also management of liver conditions are very crucial regular screening for viral hepatitis and also liver cancer are recommended for high risk individuals also weight management is another aspect so that we avoid non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease uh, is very key because obesity is the major risk for this avoid environmental toxins like uh, toxin exposure i've mentioned minimize exposure to toxins such as industrial chemicals pesticides and also pollutants also use protective gears especially for those of us who use pesticides to spray maybe our plants and uh, livestock is very which is very common here in africa uh, we should uh, always check that those precautions to protect ourselves. Safe practices. I've talked about practice safe sex if you have multiple partners. Avoid sharing needles and ensure safe, especially for the patients who need transfusion. Always make sure that the blood which is transfused on your patient is uh, safe, uh, safe for transfusion to prevent viral hepatitis and all. Number 11 is about quitting uh, smoking. Smoking cessation is very important. Uh, we don't have any negotiation about smoking. You need to stop smoking. Quit smoking to risk the risk of liver cancer and also other related diseases. So seek support if you need uh, to quit. Stress management, relaxation techniques, yoga. Uh, uh, we talk about meditation. We talk about mindfulness to support our body health. Abo and uh, supplement use, cautiously use them and also consult with your healthcare provider to avoid potential hepatotoxicity. Symptoms awareness, early detection, be aware of the symptoms like liver disease or liver disease. I talked about yellowing of the eyes especially and the skin, fatigue, abdominal pain and swelling. Seek medical attention if these symptoms also occur. So sometimes we have complications related to this, uh, liver uh, problems. Cirrhosis, I mentioned it, I mentioned it as a complication, I mentioned it earlier. So cirrhosis is a complication. This, when you talk about liver cirrhosis, we are talking about scarring of the liver tissue, which can lead to liver failure. And also the, the impact is that cirrhosis can impair liver function leading to jaundice, bleeding disorders, and also increased uh, liver uh, risk for liver cancer. Liver failure can also come about as a complication because when we lose a lot of function of the liver, can be from acute to chronic, resulting in inability to remove the toxins from the blood, leading to encephalopathy or brain dysfunction and increased risk of infections. Hepato hepatic encephalopathy is also another one where brain dysfunction caused by liver inability to remove the toxins from the blood. The impact of this is that uh, symptoms range from confusion, forgetfulness, uh, and also to coma. Portal hypertension can also be a complication of this. It, when we talk about portal hypertension, we're talking about an increased, increased blood pressure in the portal vein uh, system. This can lead to development of pharises or enlarged veins in the esophagus and the stomach, which can rupture and cause uh, life-threatening bleeding. Ascites is also another thing which has, comes as a compl complication where we have accumulation of, accumulation of fluid in the abdomen. This can cause discomfort, difficulty in breathing, and increase the risk of infection such as spontaneous uh, bacterial peritonitis. Esophageal pharises, where we have enlarged veins in the esophagus due to portal hypertension. So the, the impact of this is the high risk of rupture and bleeding, which can be very uh, fatal. Splenomegaly is also another thing which can, be, can come about. The, this can be, uh, comes about with an enlargement of the spleen due to portal hypertension. This can lead to decreased levels of uh, blood cells like uh, now we have anemia coming up, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, leukopenia, we have also thrombocytopenia due to increased sequestration of the blood cells. So spleenomegaly or the inflammation of the, 
of the spleen comes about with this liver cancer or what we call hepatocellular carcinoma cancer that originates in the liver so the impact of this in uh, with the increased risk in individuals with chronic disease cirrhosis and also hepatic b hepatitis b and also c infections coagulopathy is also another one impaired blood clotting due to the reduced production of clotting factors by the liver this increased uh, risk of bleeding and also bruising hepatorenal syndrome where we have kidney failure secondary to severe liver disease is also another complication the impact of this rapid deterioration of the kidney function and also which can be life threatening at the end of the day hepatopulmonary syndrome is also another complication where we have lung disease resulting for advanced liver disease this can impact by causing shortness of breath and hypoxemia or low blood oxygen levels. Number 12 is about malnutrition. The, 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 when we talk about malnutrition, poor nutritional status due to liver impaired ability to metabolize nutrients can lead to muscle wasting, weakness and also increased susceptibility to infections. Uh, to prevent these complications, Regular monitoring and medical checkup is very key because of our detect detection and the management of the complications. Medical, medical medication adherence, if you are taking medications as prescribed to manage the liver uh, disease and prevent complications, the benefit of this is the help control symptoms and the slow disease progression. Lifestyle modifications, maintain healthy diet, exercise regular, regularly, avoid alcohol and illicit drugs, and quit smoking at the end of the day. This supports the overall liver health functions and reduces the risk of complications. So uh, infection prevention, we talk about getting vaccinated, especially for hepatitis A and B, and also practice self-sex and avoid sharing needles. This prevents viral infections that, that can exacerbate the liver uh, disease. Also very key is about managing a, a portal hypertension use medications and also procedures to reduce portal pressure and also prevent visceral uh, bleeding, reduce the risk of life threatening, to reduce the risk of life threatening bleeding. Treating the ascites is another one by use of diuretics such as Lasix, sodium restriction and also paracentesis, what we call removal of the fluid as needed. Reduce, this reduces the abdominal discomfort and the risk of uh, infections. Number seven is about nutritional support. Consult with your nutritionist to ensure the adequate nutrient intake and prevent malnutrition. This has a benefit that maintain muscle mass and overall health. Management of encephalopathy, use of medication to reduce ammonia levels in the blood and dietary adjustment as possible. So the benefit of this is the detection and treatment of liver cancer when we do the improvement of cognitive function and also quality of life. Also surveillance for liver cancer to prevent any, to detect early and prevent it as early as possible. So guys, healthy diet, regular exercise, medication adherence, infection prevention, uh, lifestyle modifications, and also monitoring, the, uh, monitoring and also medical care stress management, they are very key in management of these, uh, uh, of these complications. So effective management so and prevention of liver disease complications require comprehensive approach from the diet, lifestyle, regular medical care, and also adherence to treatment plans. So by following the, those strategies, you can support the liver health and also reduce the risk of complications and improve overall well-being. Always seek personalized guidance and healthcare professionals to tailor your management plan as much as possible. Guys, welcome. The channel is Nazvin. My name is Vincent. Vincent is not your average nurse. This is where we get to talk matters medical in a simple language which most of us can understand. That's why when you like the video, the basic information and important as this, YouTube gets to recommend us to a larger population so that we may uh, they, may, they may have the vital information as authentic as this one. Guys, welcome to our next video and we love you very much. Peace guys, peace guys. Number 11 is about quitting uh, smoking. Smoking cessation is very important. 
uh, we don't have any negotiation about smoking you need to stop smoking quit smoking to risk the risk of liver cancer and also other related diseases so seek support if you need uh, to quit stress management relaxation techniques yoga uh, uh, we talk about meditation we talk about mindfulness to support our body health abo and uh, supplements use cautiously use them and also consult with your healthcare provider to avoid potential hepatotoxicity symptoms awareness Early detection, be aware of the symptoms like liver of all liver disease. I talked about yellowing of the eyes, especially, and the skin. Fatigue, abdominal pain, and swelling. Seek medical attention if these symptoms also occur. So sometimes we have complications related to these uh, liver uh, problems. Cirrhosis, I mentioned it. I mentioned it as a complication. I mentioned it earlier. So cirrhosis is a complication. This, when we talk about liver cirrhosis, we are talking about scarring of the liver tissue, which can lead to liver failure. And also, the, the impact is that cirrhosis can impair liver function, leading to jaundice, bleeding disorders, and also increased uh, liver uh, risk for liver cancer. Liver failure can also come about as a complication because when we lose a lot of function of the liver, it can be from acute to chronic resulting in inability to remove the toxins from the blood, leading to encephalopathy or brain dysfunction and increased risk of infections. Hepato hepatic encephalopathy is also another one, where brain dysfunction caused by liver inability to remove the toxins from the blood. The impact of this is that uh, symptoms range from confusion, forgetfulness uh, and also to coma. Portal hypertension can also be a complication of this. When we talk about portal hypertension, we're talking about increased, increased blood pressure in the portal vein uh, system. This can lead to development of pharises or enlarged veins in the esophagus and the stomach, which can rupture and cause uh, life-threatening bleeding. Ascites is also another thing which has, comes as a compl complication where we have accumulation of, accumulation of fluid in the abdomen this can cause discomfort, difficulty in breathing, and increase the risk of infection such as spontaneous uh, bacterial peritonitis. Esophageal pharises, where we have enlarged veins in the esophagus due to portal hypertension. So the, the, the impact of this is the high risk of rupture and bleeding, which can be very uh, fatal. Splenomegaly is also another thing which can, be, can come about. The, this can be, uh, comes about with an enlargement of the spleen due to uh, portal hypertension. This can lead to decreased levels of uh, blood cells. Like uh, now we have anemia coming up. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, leukopenia. We have also thrombocytopenia due to increased sequestration of the blood cells. So splenomegaly or the inflammation of the, of the spleen comes about with this. Liver cancer, or what we call a pathocellular carcinoma, cancer that originates in the liver. So the impact of this, in a, with the increased risk individuals with chronic disease, cirrhosis and also hepatic B, hepatitis B and also C infections. Coagulopathy is also another one. Impaired blood clotting due to reduced production of clotting factors by the liver. This increased uh, risk of bleeding and also bruising. Hepatorenal syndrome, where we have kidney failure secondary to severe liver disease, is also another complication. The impact of this, rapid deterioration of the kidney function, and also which can be life-threatening at the end of the day. Hepatopulmonary syndrome is also another complication, where we have lung disease resulting for advanced liver disease, this can impact by causing shortness of breath and hypoxemia or low blood oxygen levels. Number 12 is about malnutrition. The, 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 when we talk about malnutrition, poor nutritional status due to liver impaired ability to metabolize nutrients can lead to muscle wasting, weakness and also increased susceptibility to infections. Uh, to prevent these complications, Regular monitoring and medical checkup is very key because of our detection and the management of the complications. 
medical medical medication adherence if you are taking medications as prescribed to manage the liver uh, disease and prevent complications the benefit of this is the help control symptoms and the slow disease progression lifestyle modifications maintain healthy diet exercise regular regularly avoid alcohol and illicit drugs and quit smoking at the end of the day this supports the overall liver health functions and reduces the risk of complications so uh, infection prevention, we talk about getting vaccinated, especially for hepatitis A and B, and also practice self sex and avoid sharing needles. This prevents viral infections that, that can exacerbate the liver uh, disease. Also very key is about managing a, a portal hypertension, use medications and also procedures to reduce portal pressure and also prevent visceral uh, bleeding reduce the risk of life threatening to reduce the risk of life threatening bleeding treating the ascites is another one by use of diuretics such as lasix sodium restriction and also paracentesis what we call removal of the fluid as needed reduce this reduces the abdominal discomfort and the risk of uh, infections number seven is about nutritional support consult with your nutritionist uh, to ensure the adequate uh, nutrient intake and uh, prevent malnutrition. This has a benefit that uh, maintain muscle mass and overall health. Management of encephalopathy, encephalopathy use of medication to reduce uh, ammonia levels in the blood and the dietary adjustment as possible. So the benefit of this is the detection and treatment of liver cancer when we do the improvement of cognitive function and also quality of life also surveillance for liver cancer to prevent any to detect early and prevent it as early as possible so guys healthy diet regular exercise medication adherence infection prevention uh, lifestyle modifications and also monitoring the uh, monitoring and also medical care stress management they are very key in management of this uh, uh, of these complications. So effective management so and the prevention of liver disease complications require comprehensive approach from the diet, lifestyle, regular medical care and also adherence to treatment plans. So by following the, those strategies you can support the liver health and also reduce the risk of complications and improve overall well-being. Always seek personalized guidance and healthcare professionals to uh, tailor your management plan as much as possible. Guys, welcome. The channel is Nazvin. My name is Vincent. Vincent is not your average nurse. This is where we get to talk matters medical in a simple language which most of us can understand. That's why when you like the video, the basic information and the important as this, YouTube gets to recommend us to a larger population so that we may, uh, they, may they may have the vital information as authentic as this one. Guys, welcome to our next video and we love you very much. Peace guys, peace guys.